All right, hello everybody. Welcome to Creating Solutions. This is one of our Affinity webinar presentations, and today we have our newest Affinity partner, Roof Mapping, and we're going to cover doing it right today. So I want to take a minute to introduce us. Um, as you all know, I'm sure you have. You're probably tired of hearing my voice at times, but I'm John Kenny with Cottony Attorneys and Consultants. Uh, been in the roofing industry for over 45 years, third generation roofer. Roofing is without a doubt my passion, and that's how I got hooked up with uh, starting to become my good friend uh, from across the seas here, Andrew Rowley. Andrew is with RoofMapping.com, Managing Director. He does a few other things too. Quick overview, and then we'll let Andrew take over a little bit about himself. So Andrew started his career as an apprentice, uh, an architectural tech technologist, okay? That's a term I'm, that's one I didn't have yet. I got to work on that. I love that. So after successfully training his own business, he became design manager for Tapered Insulation Company. So again, roof mapping is what he created in 2016. I'm gonna hold on that and let Andrew tell you about it. It's a really exciting product of what they do. And after he joined LinkedIn and watched people post about the roofs, which you all know, that's what we love the most. And that's what I enjoy doing is posting those roofing photos out there, what's going on. He's got it, he has a passion. His passion is to, you know, inspire, explore, promote, and improve with roof mapping. And that's how we got hooked up. It was just, I looked at it, uh, I think it was probably two years ago now, when I first found out about it and started following with Andrew. It's amazing stuff. You get to see a lot of quality craftsmanship, which really is unique. So again, I want to take a moment to let Andrew talk a little bit about himself. I'm going to pop on to our next presentation slide here. So Andrew, if I missed anything on your career, please jump in there. If not, uh -huh. you know, Jump in and what's going on with roof mapping? Yeah, of course. So, I mean, as you mentioned, I, so an architectural technologist is sort of a step under the architects. They make things look nice, but as a technologist, we make sure it stands up, working with the different um, structural engineer and the M&E, etc. So, I came from a technical side of sort of architecture, but um, I got a break with the company doing tapered insulation. So I was there for nine years. So I saw an awful lot of different roofs coming in, new build, refurb you know, heritage, et cetera. Um, and that that gave me my sort of founding within the roofing industry. And I, I fell in love with it because every roof is different, um, you know, and, and designing a tapered insulation for each individual roof because it's bespoke, that gave me a lot of joy and a lot of sort of understanding. But it was only a very small percentage of the roofing work that was happening in the UK. Um, you know, there's a lot that happened with flat board. There's a lot that happened with no insulation at all. You know, it wasn't even touching the tiled roofs or the slates, etc. cetera. Um, and, that, and as I said, as, as I got onto LinkedIn, I could see that the real pride and passion that the, the installers have. And that's what I, I that's really what roofmapping.com is about. It's there for, for everybody who works in it, whether they design it, whether they install it, supply a, a product to the roof for them to put their mark on the map, as it were. So, you know, the tagline is explore the world above us, because if you've been on a roof, you know, it's a completely different world. There's a different view of the world. Um, and not many people get to see the joys of roofs. If, you know, I, I say joys of roofs, some people don't. They don't yeah, worry about there. Until it leaks. But when you see the, the intricacies up there, the different trades that work on roofs, the designs and, and everything else, you know, I wanted somewhere permanent um, for people to put their work to show their pride because social media is great, but it updates so quickly and um, you put something on, you can never find it again. You're trying to remember, oh, who was it who did this one? Um, so roofmapping.com is trying to take all of that social media, all of the websites, the case studies that companies put on the web and to put it into one place so that once it's on the map, it can then be searched, it can be filtered. People can have a look at a certain type of waterproofing. They can show all of that different types. They can look at education buildings or hospitals and people that work within those different sectors of, of the industry. Um, so, yeah, the, you've got the professional users that want to promote um, their work. Obviously, it's a great place to market your abilities, your company. Um, for the public, it's a great place. And what we want to do is design a place for them to come and get proper information. So if they're looking for, um, I don't know, a, a shingler who works in residential, it will show all the shingle roofs. If it's, you know, in this country, we, we have thatch, but if you need a thatch roofer, you know, you're going to want to search just people that do thatch. Um, so it's, it's giving them information that they can really drill down into 
so that when they make that call, they know you can do it. When you pick up the phone, you know it's someone asking you can do what what you can do. So there's no sort of wasted phone calls. Oh no, I don't specialise in that. No, I can't do that, etc. Um, but as a way of keeping all that information together, you know, it can be it can be high level, or we can start drilling down. You can start to say what insulation it was, what U value it achieves when the warranties run out. So um, all of that information that's sort of spread out throughout the ether, that's spread out through the internet, we want to take all of that and put it into one website. Um, oh. But that, so go on. No question. I want to just stop one moment. So I know, and I know we have a. Uh, this is a worldwide audience. We we have the audience over in Europe that's on, and I know we have American audience, and I do know that we have some Canadians roofing organization are listening to today. So a little one little difference is, especially in the U.S., we focus more on our values, right? And there are U values listed as well, but I think it's so. Um, just to clarify that, um, so over in in Great Britain where you're at, I, I'm making the assumption that they're really focusing more on the U value, do everything off of U's rather than the R. So yeah. I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but since you are that, that technical end of it, kind of give us a little quick overview of the difference between a U and an R value. I mean, I know the end result's the same, but it's how yeah. you look. So each material has an R value, and that's the thermal resistance. So they have a lambda value, um, watts per square meter. Kelvin um, and, that, and what the U value does it takes each element of the roof so the waterproofing the insulation the deck etc whether there's a, a void in the ceiling and it takes all of those R values and comes up with a, a global value which is the U value so where you might say your your ISO insulation has an R value of such and such so I don't know a tissue face PIR in this country is normally about 0.024 watts per square meter Kelvin the U value then takes into more consideration of the rest of the construction. So the R value is the total construction of that element, so all the different layers. And that's what our building regs, um, they have to cert reach a certain U value. So it's, it's really just governing the heat loss through the whole of that construction. Now I know obviously Europe, they concentrate more on the R value. So as long as you put an insulation layer in that achieves an R value, it doesn't really matter what the rest of the construction is because they know that it will get the U value, well, it will get the thermal performance that they need just in that one layer of insulation. So that, that, those are the, the differences between the R and the U values. That was, that was one of the best explanations that I've heard to <laughs> of somebody to do, and I think everybody will get that. So yes, you know, what we, what con United States is very similar and Canada the same way. We have the U values, which is more taken in consideration in the design process of the overall for figuring out what kind of heating or air conditioning draw you need on the building. But yeah, for the most part, the roofing industry is based upon, hey, you need an R30 driven by the, uh, you know, by the energy code. But also just to jump on that for anybody listening, you can always go back to the calculations of U values, which is not really that difficult. There's good formulas on them. And it may save you, especially on the tapered insulation designs. And I know that's where you're really looking at it. So you may not need as much overall R to get that same overall U, which is also in the energy codes. So I just want to touch on that a minute for anybody listening. It's a good time to get a little tech lesson in there along with the fun we're doing. So another question I want to ask, I've seen your site. Um, I know you've got from a couple different countries on there, and I know the purpose when we got together, and we'll get into our podcast later, which is really super exciting, was to get you more promoted out. So uh, what I mean by that is we want to see roofs from around the world on here because this is like something you're not going to see in other areas or anybody really doing. Let me ask you this. This is also beneficial for your manufacturers to highlight their products along with their top installers, correct? Of what, course, kind of, yeah. what kind of a pace are you starting to see from the manufacturers helping get this promoted out as well? So at the moment, it's a real mix of manufacturer-led um, projects put on the roof and contractors. Um, but obviously, the roofing industry, they're, they're so tightly intertwined, you, there's no point built manufacturing a product if you haven't got installers good enough to install it and vice versa you can have a great contractor but if the products aren't good then their their roof isn't going to be good so it's it's one of those symbiotic relationships between manufacturer and contractor and, mm -hmm. and obviously we see that so every roof you'll see it, it will state what the roofing product was but it will also state who the installer was so the contractor and that's what we want to build on um, we want to take that information and and really, once you've got a lot more roofs on, you'll be able to see where those two have tied up. 
or where that contractor is using lots of different products and they have a, a vast experience of using different materials or you might see that the one contractor is a specialist in one specific wardsproofing type with one contract uh, with one um, manufacturer and and that's we're not trying to lie to anybody all I want to do with roofmapping.com is just tell the truth let's just say right well these people did this roof with this material made by this manufacturer they did this one using this there seems, seems to be sometimes a lot of secrecy and I understand people want to um, protect some of their company um, secrets and that's fair enough I'm not after anything personal but sometimes people are a little bit um, hesitant to put anything on there because they say, oh, I don't want my competition to know I've done this roof. And in my mind, you know, it's like, well, why not? Just shout about it. <laughs> you know, yeah. you've done the work. I, you know? I got to tend to agree with that. To me, from coming from the contracting side is I don't want my competition to know what I'm bidding on or what I'm going after. But once I do that project and it comes out as top quality and, and, and you're proud of it, you have that craftsman pride. You want the whole world to know about it. That, that's, that is now becomes a sales tool. So that's what I think people need to really grasp this concept. And uh, you're not letting anyone on here. I know that you're you're going through a screening process. Like you're not going to let a job on here that looks absolutely horrible. It's about promoting the best of the best, correct? Yeah, and that and that's why one of the keys that we want to do is improve. Um, you know, there's lots on the internet that will talk about you know shoddy builders and shoddy roofers and we need to call them out and I don't want to be putting any of that on my roof what I want to do is let them see the quality that they're up against um, so that they need to up their game you know it's, it's not about just putting on the biggest contractors who can pay the most money you know it's, it's a free to use service so whether you're a, a one-man band two-man band or you know a hundred different contractors you know what I want to put across is your pride and passion in your work, you know, and that can be done whether, you know, you've been in the industry 50 years or you could be a new starter coming in and you've got a skill, you know, we, we want to see that skill. Um, and by showing the skilled work, hopefully, well, I think it will, the people looking for contractors will be drawn to the good quality contractors. So in a way, if you can't do the job properly, you won't get further business. Um, so yeah, it's, I, it's upskilling, it's, it's cutting out, I think, yep. the mutual friend says, the two guys in the truck. Uh, it's Let's get rid of all of that because the, the customers don't want it. They shouldn't be, you know, taken for a ride. They should be able to employ good quality contractors who are going to do the job and have the pride in it. So if they can see a selection of roofs that they've done, um, then hopefully, you know, they, they can employ them and they can do a good job for them. And that's where this comes in, you know, again, we're talking about our partnership together. That's really what it is. We, you know, we think when I looked at your product and what you're doing, one is when we had that first initial call, your passion for the roofing industry, it, it cannot be in question. It's absolutely full passion. Um, you know, and, and you, that's your full-time job is doing what you're doing with the tapered and the design and the manufacturing side. But this is uh, really as a hobby, right? This is your passion hobby. There, you don't charge for this. There's nothing involved in it. You're doing this for the good of the industry. Um, and that's how our partnership really came about. I saw you were doing this and I'm like, wow, you know, you, I, I love meeting people every day around the world that have a passion for what they do and you do. And that's really how we got hooked up. And that's what we're trying to do with our partnership is to get you promoted out into the other countries that we're in. I mean, we'd love to see this filled with the best of the best of the U.S., the best of the best of Canada. Um, we got a couple where our, our attorney and our consulting we have an office in South Africa. We're going to start pushing it over there. We'd love to see what goes on. I mean, I know for me, as just a person sitting here, I happen to be in Tampa, Florida today where I live, right? I would love to be able to see roofs that are performed over where you got in England. I'd love to see in Europe. I'd love to see South Africa. Um, South America, all that. I want to see different roofs from around the world because that's what interests me, right? To see that tradesman. So that's really where our partnership came in. And I think you're doing a good job. Now, let's spend a little bit of time jumping over on this. This is something that you and I came up with an idea when we first met. So I know a lot of you out there have not seen much on this yet. I just released a little bit yesterday. But this is our new podcast, World of Roofing, and hosted by myself and Andrew. 
So we already have done our first uh, re interview with a craftsman Joe out of out of England, and he is a thatcher. So to me, that was super super interesting because thatching is not very big. Well, it's almost non-existent over here. But to listen about the historical abilities and what he's training in 10 years to become a master thatcher. So that's what this podcast is all about. It's going to come out and you're going to be, we want you to subscribe to it. And that's really what it is. It's 20, 30 minutes of us having a conversation with a different craftsman from around the world. We're going to bring you a lot of specialty roofing, uh, you know, installers and people that are out there every day. Plus, you know, the generalization of the industry of the best of the best, if whether you're doing single ply, built up, modified, thatching, slate, tile, whatever it is you're doing, we want to bring the top craftsmen so that you get a chance to listen to them and hear what they're all about. So I want to kick this over to you. What, what's your thoughts on the world of roofing so far after we did our first one? I think it's great. You know, Joe, it was the first time I'd actually seen Joe. I've spoken to him a couple of times on the phone about getting his roofs on the map. Um, but he, he's a lovely bloke. He's down to earth. You know, speaking to him, he's, he's very humble. He doesn't see what we see in him, I don't think. But he's an, he's an amazing craftsman. Um, and when I was speaking to his wife about something she does, she has more the technology side than Joe does. Um, but I said, you've got a really skilled husband. And she says, I know I have. And he doesn't really see it. Um, but he does. He's got an eye. He's trained for many years to become that sort of master Thatcher. Um, but yeah, like you said, you, you, we just want to interview and see top quality craftsmen, regardless of the material that they're installing. Um, you, you know, you can have some wonderful details in felt, in liquids and, and all the different things out there. There's some great metal roofs that I've seen. Uh, I've got quite a few actually um, over in Europe and in Asia. Um, but yeah, it take, it, and I think that's what I really enjoy about it. I'm not a roofer. Um, I can barely lay carpet and when you see what they do with felt on a roof how quickly and how well they install it and get it to turn and actually stick to the substrate and I think that was what really gave me that push to do something about the website instead of it just being an idea of actually doing something. Um, I was watching some installers in central London um, on a job that I was looking after and it was just it amazed me. I just thought wow this is you know this is real skill um, and and unfortunately, there's still this reputation that, oh, it's just a roofer. It's seen as a bit of a, a loser's job, but it's certainly not, you know, and, that, and that's what the inspire part is. I want to help inspire that next generation, um, you know, to see the roofs that are being done and to think, wow, I'd, I'd like to do that. I'd like to have the skill to produce this. Um, so if we can do that with the podcast, you know, if we can get it out to the younger generations, into the colleges and the schools and, and make roofing an actual proper sort of career path for them um, so that they can become skilled craftsmen. I think that that would be a wonderful thing because we're struggling in the UK for school, for any skilled builders and roofers at the moment. Um, and I don't know if that's the same throughout the world, but yeah, let's give it, them some. It is a world, it's a worldwide issue. There's no doubt we're, we're facing the same thing here in the US and uh, Canada has a fairly good apprentice program on a national basis, you know, very similar to what you have over in Europe, but still struggling to get the young in um and i think it's up to us you know really it's up to us to promote the our industry out to get people interested i i, I don't think i mean I, anybody who watches the first one you're, you're going to fall in love with joe i will guarantee you that um i don't even know how to thatch but i want to go thatch all right so that's what happened after i watched it i mean, like i said i'm third generation roofer in my family and i learned more from that 20 25 minute interview and you're right, Joe's wife should be extremely proud of him. And I know from talking to him, he's a very humble man. And he doesn't give himself the credit for how skilled he is. But when you hear about this entire process that he goes through to get one, uh, you know, one cottage done, to, it's, uh, it's amazing and, and, and you're going to enjoy it. But that's, you know, that so you don't want to, if you're in the United States and listening to it and you're younger, maybe you're not going to be a Thatcher, but that's the kind of passion you can take with you to the other types of systems that are done wherever you're at, whether you're in Canada or anywhere in the world, take that passion that you're gonna see in these you know, world craftsmen that we're bringing. I know one thing I'd like to get out there 
working on. I'd love to get a lead, you know, lead roofing still popular over there. That is a huge art in itself. That amazes me every time I see it, um, you know, where they can pour the lead in and do the design work and then actually mold it on the job. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. And I know we'll get into some tile, we'll get into some slate. Um, I know we'll work over in the other part of Europe a little bit. We'll get ourselves a Doc Decker Meister on here at one point. And then we're going to work on getting some skilled craftsmen in the U.S., Canada as well. So, you know, we're not going to over promote this. We're not, I mean, we're not doing this on a daily basis. So you're going to hear, you know, hopefully every three weeks to a month, you're going to get a new craftsman from around the world coming on. So looking forward to it, uh, you know, getting it out there. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, so I guess jumping back, let's see what we got coming up on the next one here, Andrew. We're on to the contact next, but before we get into that, um, I did have a couple questions that just came in. So okay. I want to see if you, they're actually for you, which is what this is about. So one of the questions I got, and I know you probably will get that. Um, I have, let me see here, this popped up on my screen down below. Let me get my folder out here. So I got this particular question came in when I first promoted it out. I got this through LinkedIn messaging. So the question I got here is from Paul. Paul lives in the Northeast of the United States. So he's up in that Northeast corridor, which is up in New York, New York area, New Jersey and upwards. He didn't specify. He basically said, I, I, I take pride in what I do. I specialize in residential work. Um, I do a lot of slate and um, wood shake work. So that's it. That's how do I get on? So he's basically saying to me through you, how does he contact you and what's the process to, for you to look at one of his projects to become on, you know, roofmapping.com? OK, so if, if he wants to send me an email um, that's on, on the screen now or you can go on to the website, roofmapping.com, and there's a little button top left that says add a roof. Um, at the moment, it's it's a it's quite manual. It has to come to me. Um, but yeah. Get him, get him to email me. I'll send him a form. We can fill out the details, get some photos, um, and we can get it on there. Um, you know, what I want to do in the, as this develops is obviously allow people to put them on themselves. At the moment, we're not quite there. So, yeah, if, if Paul wants to contact me, if he wants to send me an email or, or okay. via the website, I'll certainly get in contact with him and get the ball rolling on that one, definitely. Sounds good. Um, I got one that popped up here. Um popped up here live. Let me see. Let me get to that. This is great. I'm glad we got some questions here. Definitely. So, and bear with me. I pull it up in the message here. So, we got one from James. It says, uh, what other continents are you really looking forward to learning about their roofing system? So, well, I guess I'm going to, I mean, for me, I know where I said, I, I'm really interested to see roofing from around the world, regardless where it is. But how about you, Andrew? Where are you? How are you promoting yourself out? What are I know I see you on LinkedIn a lot and you're reaching out. And I know after talking to uh, Joe and that you, I know over in Europe, Instagram is huge on yep. promotion out of roofers. I know on my personal Instagram account, I'm hooked up with a lot of roofers over there and I get a lot of great shots. So what is your focus? Like I know you're in in great, you know, in England and yep. you got a lot, you got a, you got some on there. So how how are you reaching out to the European roofers? How are you starting to get this rolling on a, on a more of a localized basis other than broadcasting like this? So at the moment, it's a, it's pretty much all through LinkedIn and Instagram. So I spend a lot of my time looking at pictures, making comments. You know, if I see something I like, it's like, well, let's let's just put this on the map. You know, that that's something I don't even know what the saying really means. Let's put it on the map. But I think for me it's just you know let's shout about it you've done a great roof let's tell everybody um i know you've put it on social media but that may be gone soon and i've actually got every all seven continents at the moment have something on the map um even antarctica i was quite lucky to get one um it was base y uh, part of the heritage is actually an ico felt that was used on there because that's what was used originally um when they went down to the antarctic but one, oh, I suppose one area I'd like to explore a little bit more is sort of the Far East. Um, there's one guy on Instagram who I follow who does some beautiful um, sort of very traditional oriental roofs um, in metal. And it, you just look at it, you think, wow, that is, and it is, it's an art form. It's not tiling because um, you just think, how on earth does he think it through? He's put a couple of his 3D renders on there. 
um, before he started, and, it's, and that in itself is amazing. Um, but yeah, it, it's a global it's a global project. Um, I'd love roofs from all over the place. I don't have many. I do have some in Africa, but they're North Africa, so Algeria. There's a big mosque that we've got there, but you know I haven't got any sort of in mainland Africa. So if you've got an office down there that we can get some in South Africa or Kenya or yeah, anyway, I'd I'd love to have one in each country. That's my next step. Sounds um, good. Country of the world would be great to have. But I, and I suppose coming back to, I think it was Paul you mentioned up in the northeast. For for him, it's about putting on, put the roofs on that you've done. Let's show people your area of work. Let's show them your area of expertise. So if he does slate residential in a certain state, then let's fill the map in that state with all, you know, with his logo. So when people go on, they say, wow, this company's done a lot. Let me look at this company. Um, you know, in the UK, if, if you're a national contractor, let's show all your, your logos all over the place. So, but if you work in a local area, then really dominate that local area with your, with your roofs, show the people what you've done. And if it is just residential, then, take pride in you do residential roofs um if you do just commercial show that you do just commercial so that the residential guys don't phone you for sort of inquiries so that that's what and i suppose put on as many as you can um you know there's been a couple who have started with one or two you know i want to take them and and fill for what they do i'm working with one manufacturer at the moment who looking at their case studies on the website they've got a good sort of 50 60 um but i know they've done more work than that because i've designed a lot of their tapered schemes over yeah. the years so it's it's a big task but i would love every completed roof in the world to be mapped so you know what I, I suppose what i'm after is once a contractor's finished a job they think right yeah let's put it on instagram but actually let's put it on roofmapping.com so it becomes part of their company process we've finished a roof let's promote it let's put it on the map let's build our um, portfolio of jobs on this permanent interactive database because the more you've got on the more likely you're going to be found when someone Absolutely. does a search um, so that that's the long-term goal and, and that's okay. where I need the help of the roofing community I can't do that by myself this is I suppose I'm providing a service so that other people can put that information on for themselves and then we can see it grow and develop and, and I can add the tools for the searches the filters um, and the one thing I have got on at the moment, which again is a free service, it's a hyperlink to your company. So when when you put your roof on the map, it'll have a little hyperlink and it'll take you direct. It'll take the user directly to your website. So I'm not trying to control anything. I'm just trying to put information in a place so that they can see it. Wow, I like that roof. Who did it? Let me go to their website and give them a call. Well, there's all positive reasons for getting on RoofMapping.com. You got it's marketing. It is promotional, and most importantly, it shows pride and craftsmanship, and it raises the bar of our industry up with the consumer, which is what we want to do. That's the ultimate goal, and it will also help between this and the podcast we're doing to generate an interest, interest again back in the roofing industry that we are not a, a canned industry that you just go work in. You can take pride. You can earn a great living you support your family you get to the next level of your you know abilities and you learn and learn and learn so those are the great things so we're going to help promote that out we'll definitely take the challenge in south africa and the united states and canada for you for sure get this out and help promote so that brings us to a close here today so i would like to say if anyone needs to contact andrew i know he's told before but we have his email here andrew at roofmapping.com you can get a hold of me at jkenny at cottonycl.com. And also don't forget to check us out um, by going to roofmapping.com. And if you need anything in the industry on our side, we have a great new site. Just type in shopcottony.com and it'll take you there. And it's all the training. We're doing a lot of workforce training, estimating training for the industry to continue to promote up and get the most trained people we can there. So, and join us and don't forget about the world of roofing. So that being said, Andrew, I want to thank you for taking the time today. Very proud to have you on as an affinity partner. This is one of the more unique things that we've thank done. Um, we wish you well and can't wait to talk to you here again shortly on our next uh, podcast. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Yes. Bye-bye.